So in three-dimensional Euclidean space, there is a classical, beautiful set of basis vectors that we use to write all other vectors in terms of. And this is called the standard basis, or the IJK basis. So these are all unit vectors, and they are all perpendicular to one another. So we classically view I as going in this direction, J as going into the board, and K as being the vertical vector. We can then write all other vectors as linear combinations of these basis vectors. So, for example, the vector A will have uh, a component in the direction of vector I, which we'll call A1, plus a component in the direction of vector j, which we'll call a2, plus a component a3 in the direction of the vector k. And of course, these numbers could be zero. For instance, if we've got a vector that has no vertical component and is just in this plane, the ij plane, then the vertical component would be zero and it would just have components in the direction of i or j. You could imagine taking the vector 2i, which would be just in the direction of the vector i, but twice the size of it, that would have no j component and no k component, so these two numbers would then be zero. But any vector in three-dimensional Euclidean space can be written as a linear combination of our standard basis vectors. We've done the same thing for our vector b here, and we've called the components b1, b2, and b3. Now, when you describe vectors as linear combinations of the standard basis vectors, it turns out that there is then a beautiful formula for the value of the dot product of the two vectors. So if you were to take two vectors, a and b, with these components here, and you wanted to dot product them together, it turns out that this can be computed by taking the components in the i direction, multiplying them together, adding that to the components in the j direction multiplied together, and then adding finally the components in the k direction added together. So you get an absolutely beautiful formula in terms of the components of the vectors in terms of the standard basis. And now the aim for the video is to understand why this formula works, why this is true. Now note, this only works when you are describing vectors in terms of linear combinations of the standard basis vectors. It is very important that the basis vectors that you are using are one unit vectors and two are all perpendicular to one another. Now, if you know more advanced linear algebra, you will know that three-dimensional Euclidean space, there are loads of other sets of basis vectors that you could use. If they are not made up of unit vectors that are all perpendicular to one another, then it certainly would not be the case that you could compute the dot product of the two vectors by just multiplying the components with one another and adding them all together. So it relies upon this choice of the standard basis. It relies upon the basis vectors being unit vectors that are all perpendicular to one another, and we'll see how uh, in this video. So this isn't actually too difficult at all. All we need to do is just show three more things about the dot product, and then it's very easy to uh, work out that that formula is true. So the first one is very simple, and really we've already done it, and that is that the dot product is commutative. So if you take two vectors, a and b, and you take the dot product of a with b, it's the same thing as taking the dot product of b with a. And I hope that that's obvious from what we've already done, but just to illustrate that, of course, we saw how the formula for the dot product of a with b is the length of the vector a times the length of the component of vector b in the direction of vector a but we saw how we could rearrange this to this, which is the length of vector b times the length of the component of vector a that is in the direction of vector b, which is what you would get as the definition of the dot product of b with a. So as these two things we know are the same thing, um, that evidently illustrates that the dot product of a with b is the same as the dot product of b with a. So that's property number one done. So the next thing we need to discuss is slightly more complicated, and that is 
what happens when we dot product together two vectors where the angle between them is greater than 90 degrees. So we have our vector A here and we have our vector B here and the angle here is now greater than 90 degrees. Now the answer is the formula here remains exactly the same However, we need to discuss the pictorial intuition behind what's happening because all of the pictures we've used previously to gain intuition have always been in the case where the angle was less than 90 degrees and it's a bit more complicated when the angle is greater than 90 degrees. So the complicating factor now is if you look at this vector B, the component of the vector B that is parallel to the vector A is now actually anti-parallel to the vector A, it's pointing in exactly the opposite direction. So when we dot plot these two vectors together, we no longer want the answer to be positive. We want it to be negative because this component of vector B that's parallel to vector A is pointing entirely in the opposite direction. And indeed, this formula works perfectly to deliver that result. The answer to what the dot product is in the case when the angle is greater than 90 degrees is it's the length of vector A times the length of this component of vector B that's parallel to vector A but the negative of that. Uh, so the answer you overall get then is a negative number for the dot product and we're just going to see how that works out. So if we want to work out the length of this line, i.e. the length of the component of vector b that is parallel to vector a, what we need to do is take the length of vector b, i.e. the length of the hypotenuse of this red right angled triangle here, and multiply it by cos of this angle here, which we'll call phi, which is just 180 take away theta. If we then want to work out what the dot product of a with b is, we need to take the length of the vector a and multiply it by the length of this line here, but because it's anti-parallel with the vector a, we want to put a negative sign there. So this is what we want intuitively, the dot product of a would be to equal, and we're going to show how this is the same thing as this. So just rearranging now, we'll pull the length of vector b out. So we've got the length of a times the length of b times negative of cos of 180 minus theta, so we've just substituted in for phi the fact that it is 180 minus theta. We should have an additional bracket there which I've just added in. So a bit of trigonometry now, I have drawn the graph y is equal to cos of x uh, over the um, region from 0 to 180 degrees here and the reason I've done that is so that we can explore what this thing, cos of 180 minus theta, is going to be equal to. So if you consider a theta, and I've specifically made theta between 90 and 180, but in fact it could have, the, what we're about to say works for any value of theta between 0 and 180, uh, but since we're interested in thetas greater than 90, I've put it here. If you then consider what 180 minus theta looks like on this graph, so you need to go backwards this time from 180 by an amount theta. So you go back from here to here, the same amount as you go forward from here to here to get to theta. And hopefully you can see by the symmetry of this graph that the value of cos of 180 minus theta, the value of this point of the graph, is the same as negative the value of cos of theta. So if we take cos of theta, it's down here, but that value is just the negative of cos of 180 minus theta because of the symmetry of the graph of cos of x. So in fact, we can substitute in here, this is equal to negative cos of theta, and the negatives then cancel out, and you're returned to this formula here. So that's why this formula is brilliant. Even when the component of the b vector is that's parallel to a is actually anti-parallel to a, it works exactly as we want it to intuitively. It turns the value into a negative value there. So overall, the dot product is multiplying the length of vector A with the length of the component of vector B that is parallel to vector A. And 
if this component of vector b is in the same direction as vector a, then the dot product will be positive. If it's in the opposite direction to vector a, then the dot product will be negative.